guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, something super exciting is about to happen. We have Fortune Auto coilovers going on my 2020 to 86. So, quick unboxing. Well, actually, I'm gonna show you guys some of the parts I got first off. Got some SPC tow arms for the rear. Got some SPC camber bolts for the front. Some new cardboard end links. There's one more thing I have to get. Can't forget these. We got some blocks racing adjustable rear load control arms. These are the Fortune Auto 500 series coilovers. So it comes with everything. You got your certificate of assembly. <laughs> Upside down. Certificate of assembly. Got stickers there. Got the spanner wrenches. These come with new front end links for you. So got them right here. And then I'm not going to take them all out right now. Of course. Just pull out a front strut here. Now, this is my first set of Fortunatos, so uh, this should be probably the nicest coilovers I ever got. These are the 500 series with the default springs at uh, 6K front and 7K rear. So here is one of the front struts. Definitely very nice. I love the finish. Now, I do have to set the preload on this because you don't set that from the factory. So they recommend a quarter inch for McPherson style struts. So I'm gonna do that real quick. But yeah, these are super nice guys. I've never had any coilover that was like this. My first set of coilovers was the Teen Street Basis. And then I got the Silvers Neo Max after that. And now I got some Fortune Auto. So yeah, this is gonna be super exciting to put on this car because this car has the craziest wheel gap ever and this should solve all of that. So I'm gonna unbox the rest of this, get some cinematics, and then we can go ahead and start with the install. Here they are all laid out. So these things are no joke, guys. It's actually one of the nicest craftsmanship I've ever seen. Love the finish. I mean, green's not my favorite color or anything, but definitely it's very nice. And of course, these have the top camber plates, so should be able to get some a negative camber, of course. Now, here's the thing. So clearly, the 8.6 is still on stock wheels. So I actually test fitted the stock 8.6 wheels on my Impreza and the fronts would not clear the Rembo. So even with a spacer, the inner barrel would hit the top of the caliper. So we're gonna be slammed on stocks for a bit. Uh, the new wheels should be coming in the next couple months. It's gonna be a little bit, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna lower this car on stocks. I'll probably try to tuck a little bit. I don't know. I mean, clearly I'm gonna adjust it when I get my new wheels, but for right now, we're just gonna be slammed on stocks. So that's what we're gonna do. So now we're gonna preload the spring. So Fortune Auto recommends a quarter of an inch of preload. So pretty much on these, it's pretty simple. Loosen the five mil Allen head on here with the provided key. This should allow the collar to spin freely. Pretty loose there. So we're gonna measure the spring, see where it's at. So from the top of the spring perch to the bottom, right about six inches. So we need to go to five and three quarters. So that should be enough preload right there. So after you set it right there, go ahead and tighten back that Allen key. So this adjusts with the threaded body on the bottom. So when we put it in the car, that's when I'll do the adjustment. I'm not sure where to put it at. Uh, I might just set the somewhere. I'll probably set it for when this base hits the bottom of the collar. I'll just do that on both sides and just see where to go from there. So I'm gonna get the other spring and preload that and we'll keep going. So I just preloaded the other one. Now I'm just gonna adjust so that this collar here meets the bottom. So we're at about two and three quarters. So same on the other one. Also two and three quarters. So now these are both at the same height and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the passenger side. I already took off the wheels, so let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and disconnect the brake line bracket there. There's just a bolt on the bottom. Then take off this clip. There's two of them right here. And then we can go ahead and undo that bolt on the end link. We're actually be doing 
undoing both of them because we got the Fortunato end link to install. So that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, let's go ahead and get these clips off. All right, got the sensor wire off. Now there's a bolt down here. Now we're just gonna impact the end links off. Now usually, if you don't have an impact, there is an Allen socket in the center there. So you have to put an Allen key there and take a pass-through ratchet or open-ended wrench and then loosen it that way. But hopefully the impact's fast enough that the end link won't spin. It's like it already rusted. Oh my gosh, all right. So I'm gonna have to take an Allen key and a wrench, get that off. There we go. Of course my impact was not fast enough, so you're only gonna take off this end once you get the straw off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom bolt. Knowing my luck, that's probably stuck, so. So that actually takes forever <laughs> when you don't have a ratcheting wrench. So I took off the other side actually. I'm gonna worry about the bottom one after I get this strut off. Um, hopefully it doesn't crap out on itself, but pretty much two 19 millimeter bolts. Of course your camera bolt's up top, but I'm gonna be installing the SPC bolt. So in this car, this thing kind of just falls because there's no axle. So just be careful. Don't let anything kind of bend the wrong way like that. 12 more bolts up here. I'm not gonna film this because I know it's gonna be a pain, but I'm gonna take off that bottom bolt on the end link and hopefully that just comes right off. Then after that, you can throw on the new end link that comes with your coil lovers. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't give us any trouble. Crazily enough, that came off with no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the strut in now and I got the correct side here. tighten those down and then we can probably get this strut on so hopefully I did this right but what I did was I matched the length of the end link to the stock one I believe that's what you're supposed to do and then that's how I got this length here so let's tighten down these lock nuts should be good to go from there after we bolt everything on So got the side all buttoned up, top hats, I maxed out the camera plates already. Down here, got the SPC camera bolt installed up top. It's left the stock bolt on the bottom. So when I go to dial in my camber alignment, I'll just have them adjust this bolt here and it should be all good to go. Got the end link secure. I might have to loosen this again just to fit the other side, but I guess we'll find out, but yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the other side and we'll catch up with you guys right after. Everything's officially tightened down. Of course, gotta torque the wheels down, but coilovers are on. Everything's tightened up. Camber is maxed out. So you can already kind of see the camber. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too much. I might dowel some back with the top hats, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and begin the rear. We gotta do the control arms, toe arms, and the end links, and then of course the coilovers. So definitely got some more to do, but the fronts are done for now. We're gonna drop the car down after the fact and then see if we need to adjust anything. I actually need to lock down that locking collar anyway, so we'll see for right now. Let's begin the rear. 
All right, so several hours later. So apologize in advance for not filming the install for the rears, but they're on right now. As you can see, we are running the stock lower control arms because the Blox Racing ones, for some whatever reason, the bolt that connects to the hub slash knuckle just does not fit. And it was very infuriating and I didn't have the means to drill out the hole anymore. So since I'm not really fitting aggressive wheels right now, I'm just gonna keep the stock control arms. I did install the SBC toe arms, so at least I have those, but right now we're not gonna have any camber adjustment in the rear, uh, just temporarily. Honestly, I think I'm just gonna save up for the Cusco's. That's what I wanted originally. Kind of impulse bought the Blox Racing ones, and yeah, it kind of sucks that they don't work. So, rear is always more frustrating for some whatever reason. People say it's the easiest, but honestly, there's just so many things, especially I was doing all this other stuff along with the coilovers that it was a big pain. So I still need to torque down the side. Uh, I got the height adjusted to right about there. I'm not sure how low that is. Honestly, as long as I'm tucking a little tire for stock, it won't look slammed. I'll be okay. But yeah, so go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and torque everything down and then we're going to put the car down on the floor. Well, it's definitely lower, but I don't know, guys. I feel like it probably goes more. Well, maybe not. Maybe we should just leave it like this for function purposes or slam it. I don't know. It does look a lot better, though, but I feel like it's not low enough. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust these and just check out the rears because I know these coilovers don't go that low back. So yeah, they've got a bit of gap back there. Well, this side is so much more cambered than the other side. Set the bolts at the same spot, but... This definitely looks like there's more on this side than this side. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna lower it another inch, maybe, if we can, and go from there. So, ended up doing an inch and a quarter drop in the front. Looks a lot better now. The rears, I actually just maxed them out. I mean, with the 17s, we got some gap here, but maybe when I get my actual wheels, which will be 18 by nine and a half, should be perfect fitment. So yeah, and I'll probably get some drop LCAs as well so I can get a little bit more height. But yeah, this is where we're gonna be at for a couple months until the new wheels show up. Overall, very happy with how this turned out, but I'll bring it out outside, of course, to get some better shots. But yeah, this is it, guys. All right, so first impressions of the Fortune Auto 500 coilovers. These feel pretty darn good. So I only have the stiffness at around 10 to 14 clicks from a full hard, so it's kind of right around the center. Uh, I've got the front stiffer than the rears, and uh, honestly, you guys, it, it feels awesome. I mean, these are probably the best coilovers I've ever had. I mean, the silvers I had on the Impreza, they were actually really good as well. So for what these are, and for the price that they're at, like, it's definitely the quality can't be beat. It's definitely a big difference. I mean, the car still honestly feels pretty, uh, pretty soft, like stock suspension, which is pretty insane. Because, you know, usually coilovers are a little stiffer, but if you get a quality thing, then honestly, it feels super good. So obviously, I still need to get this aligned. Uh, I got the camber pretty crazy in the front. It's probably like negative five degrees or something, <laughs> which is pretty excessive, but I mean, it's it feels really good, guys, so. so. Here we are right here, sorry for the wind noise. This is the car on some Fortunato 500 coilovers. The front's got some room to go. The rears are actually maxed out, so um, I know the fortunes don't go that low in the rears, especially on this car. So I may need to get some low control arms that drop it lower, or honestly, it might be at the right height for what I'm trying to fit the wheels at. So yeah, hint, hint, uh, the wheels I'm getting, they're the same spec as the T's on my Impreza. But yeah, guys, I love how this looks with the coilovers. Honestly, any car looks good when it's low, even if it's on stock wheels. This is the fitment I got it at, guys. Look at that. I'm tucking the front and then the camber in the rear kind of makes it look like it's tucked as well. So the front's actually lower than the rear, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. I'm really trying my hardest not to slam this car, but <laughs> it just looks so good when it's low, but... Honestly, my direction for this car is a more functional setup for more performance-oriented driving. I mean, it'll still be pretty low, but it won't be crazy stanced like this. So, yeah, this is it, guys. I love how this car looks. I can actually, you know, break my own neck now because this car looks freaking sick.
as always thank you guys so much for watching the video sorry it wasn't a full install but ran through some issues and just really wanted to get it done so yeah that's why we have what we have but anyway coilovers feel great definitely can't wait to do more of this car because there's just so much you can do as you guys already know um, yeah, definitely super exciting potting this car this is my dream car so like having coilovers on it finally it just changes it so much the stock height is pretty ridiculous so but like always guys follow me on instagram at what i kg effects check out katana style at katana.style on instagram and katanastyle.com we are going to be releasing some new stuff here soon so definitely stay tuned for that and i'm going to go get a drink because it is hot as crap outside i will see you guys next time Oh,